Hello guys, it's your girl Penny. We are in the Gelele Peta in Uganda. I'm here to shoot two video. Yeah, we're going to be having the an interview with Arthur, youth entrepreneur and painting. Don't forget to subscribe, watch the whole video to the end. Like, leave a comment in the comment section. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I upload a new video here on YouTube. I will be partitioning this video into part 1 and 2. Make sure that you watch all the videos. Don't miss out on the most important things that you need to hear. It will inspire you to start a business or to operate a successful business. Thank you very much. Hello viewers. I had an opportunity to meet Arthur Amakera University graduate who is lighting up Kampala, Uganda for his innovative eco-energy business, Kainza Energy. With a passion for sustainability and a drive to make a difference, Apa has turned his education into action, providing affordable clean energy solutions for his community. Discover how this young entrepreneur is powering a bright future for Uganda, one green project at a time. Hello Arthur, nice meeting you. Can you talk about yourself and when you started your eco energy briquette business? Hello, uh, thank you so much Feli for having me on your channel. My name is Arthur, I'm a mechanical engineer by profession. We started Kainza Energy as a campus project when I was still at Makere University and we didn't register it formally until 2017 but right now we are dealing in eco-friendly products and one of our top selling products is the charcoal briquettes which um, I brought it to one of the factories. We have three factories and we have a plan to build as many as possible but right here we are doing the production of briquettes then we are also into biogas production and we are first company in East Africa to successfully market biogas in cylinders. Also to support the mainstream market we do some LPG packaging and retailing thank you so much for having me and i'm very very happy to have you here kainza energy all right thank you very much what inspired you to start this business um what inspired us was one there was a demand yeah there was a demand for the product we started with biogas production and with biogas you find that you don't need anything to get it to produce for you the results that you need you need access to waste and the fact that the main raw material was cow dung, we thought like this would be something that was, you know, fairly easy for someone to start with. We didn't think that we would be doing this 10 years later, but um, the main inspiration was that the resources were available and the team, we had really good team spirit. So we were able to put together our first biogas system and it worked so well. So we have, we have come out to produce different kind of products based on the shift that we have encountered in the market. How much was your startup capital? Um, starting the business, we started it as mainly a service business, which is basically where you find a customer and you give them a quotation and basically they give you the money and you go buy the things, bring the product to the client, then you share the, you know, with your team. Um, so we basically started out with nothing and most of our first investment was rent and things like that because it was mainly the team. Eventually in 2016, we applied for the total startup of the year. I think that was the first time they were doing the startup. They are in their fifth season right now, but were the pioneers of the total startup. And um, they gave us a startup grant of 40 million Uganda shillings. And that's it quite was, some money. Eh? Yeah, it was a huge motivator. It wow. got us on our way. And so we were able to structure the company. We registered it in 2017. Okay. We met um, our partners. So it was it was really a good boost. How was the registration process? Um, registration was, it was not hard, but it was not easy. Okay. Yeah, it was not so hard, but there were some things that we faced some challenges. Kindly share those challenges and uh, how you solved them. Just two challenges only, including your the business and then the registration. Yeah, the registration one was the business itself. Yeah. You know, the name was, you know, they told us it was not available and all that. But when we insisted, they told us it can be made available. And then also with the licenses is like the licensing people wanted to know where we're operating from and remember we didn't have money to pay rent because yeah, we're doing mainly construction business we don't need to have a money and facility yeah um but this was way earlier on yeah so you find that they really hassled us saying that we could not be given a license because we didn't have a location which was a huge challenge and my partner came in and they got us that space in chisasi like where if you check on the locations of kainza so our head office is and that's how we managed to navigate through that after what could be the challenge 
that your business is facing? One of the main challenges that we have been facing is access to raw materials. I really find it hard to get access to raw materials and then also managing deliveries. We have so many clients and the bikes that we have are not enough for us to do our deliveries in time, which sometimes creates delays. And the biggest challenge for briquette business is especially in the rain season, they take long to dry. So you'll find that when a customer comes and they order for a big purchase, like here we were able to make 3.5 tons every week. But you might find that your other clients who order for two bags or three bags, they are put in a waiting line. So that's one of the challenges. It's the drying time of a briquette. Is, it is quite long. But we are hoping that um, within a few months, we are going to raise some extra funding mm. to install like solar dryers. Even if it's in the rainy season, you're able to have your briquettes dry within at least 48 hours. How do you market your business? Um, so marketing is one of the most important functions of our business we are very strong on social media Which are very, do you use we are very strong especially on facebook yeah we are very strong on tiktok and on whatsapp and especially whatsapp like we do most of our sales over whatsapp we actually built a, a mobile app called the kainza app it was a very nice app but we failed to host it and we had to bring it down but i'm hoping to bring it back up soon but the idea is that we wanted to create this online marketplace where you can buy from brickets not just for kainza but even another entrepreneur because we cannot produce 3.5 tons can't even fulfill this trading center you know so in case there are other suppliers they can put their products up on the app and we take care of the deliveries you know in that we are a one-stop center for clean cooking but we're hoping we shall bring that up again we have some content on our youtube where you can check out that app in operation right. but most of our sales it is online and we hope to maintain our biggest strength what sets us apart even though we're a new player Again, it's giants like Total, our, our first sponsor. <laughs> like right now, they are we're in the same business, in the same business, <laughs> the same market. Yeah. So you find that what sets us apart is that we really, really care about our customer. Like yeah. we really go the extra mile. We are very big on after sales. You mm. know, um, unlike other companies, we make sure that all your products find you at home. Mm. Yeah, like you don't have to incur the cost of going to the petrol station, of going to the factory, or putting a a bag of charcoal in your new car you know like there's a there's a class that we are targeting like the lower middle class and the, and the middle class you know like they are conscious they want to use um, renewable energy but the convenience is what we are answering you know like we make sure that this gas is in your kitchen because most people can buy the briquette sometime a customer called us late in the night and they told us they'll fail to light the briquette all right yeah. so from that time we make sure that we light it and make sure that they know exactly how product works yeah. all right so how many youths or you guys are you employing um right now our core team has eight people eight the people. core executive team okay. yeah which is managed by uh, a board of three people this group of eight people it is managing a wider network yeah, because we developed a radical model whereby through the absi foundation we are planting teams of youth so we like in Bundibujo, we went there and we trained 28 youth and so they empower them with the machines and they sell under our brand all the way to west nile in yumbe we have over yeah. 300 yeah oh, I'm inspired. So, yeah so we have in bali uh, we have about 30 in tororo about 28 mm -hmm. so we are in eight districts so we have 800 youth who are losing operating on their own yeah but we we give them some oversight mm. and also you find that you might have your briquettes but you don't know where to sell them yeah. so in case Kainza gets a client in uh, in Fort Porto we contact the youth in Fort Porto and we tell them to do the delivery so our brand is is magnified and the youth gets some little extra income right yeah. approximately how much are you making per month um per month I'm not really sure but um our finance guys I know he's he's managing the sales for this particular factory, mm. but I know that every week mm -hmm. I think we have sales of about two point five to three million. That is on on average, like on an average season. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which period is the most busy in your line of work? Um, the most busy. I'm not sure how to answer that because mm -hmm. like there's a, a season where it is busy because the demand is high. Yeah. Like for example, from September October, you find that the sales for charcoal is very high. Yeah. But 
then also in the rainy season in the rainy season there's no charcoal yeah like charcoal is a bit more scarce so you, you find that our charcoal is drying slowly the demand has gone up and we have to do the deliveries while it's raining on a motorcycle so you find that those seasons there like the one of the christmas period is a good season but it's one of the rain season it's a very very testing season okay okay yeah. what impact has your business had on the community um i think the biggest impact is job creation yeah like for example um like you know these guys who are at the national stadium the guys at the railway mm -hmm. who make those clay pots so we went and we incorporated all of them they are working under kaiza now yeah so what we did is that they were making only three thousand shillings per stove yeah so we go in and we get for them a fund which is absolutely foundation and they give them materials and they can now sell a stove of twelve thousand. all right yeah let's get inside and we get deeper in these questions <laughs>